Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Figured I'd give you a um, greenhouse tour, a little update what's going on. I've just been really busy. I haven't really been able to get videos up in the last couple of days. I usually try to upload a video every day. And uh, with all the planting I've been doing and the rains coming down and then the heat waves, you can't work in this greenhouse when it's hitting 120 degrees. It's just absolutely impossible. And even trying to do anything outside when it's 85, 95 degrees, it's it's very hard. I try not to push it doing that, so I do other things indoors and stuff like that. I'm trying to get other things done. But I figured I'd give you an update and a tour of what's going on in the greenhouse and just kind of show you some of the plants growing. I actually have more than I thought I'd be able to plant at all, but it's looking pretty hard I, I I don't know how I'm gonna plant the rest the, out the rest of these tomatoes I mean I've I've got probably 60% of them planted already but there's a small percentage left that are not planted and I gotta find a home for them in a good home because I got to do a review on the tomato and I can't do that if the tomatoes aren't growing right or they're growing or not growing at their best things like that so like I say most of them are most of the other stuff's all planted all the doubles and duplicates yeah I just I got a spot in the backyard I dumped it in the, the back garden which I don't know if I did an update to that I don't think I showed you my second garden I'll call it the second outdoor garden I don't think I showed you that yet I just haven't had time I've got like 30 videos lined up ready to go but I got to edit them and so yeah just hang in there guys I mean the, I see a lot of people are commenting and just hang tight and by the end of the day I am shot I am just I'm totally shot I've been moving wheelbarrows full of wood chips I've been moving soil around I've been mixing I've probably mixed by hand maybe maybe over two yards of soil by hand just to give you an idea on how much soil I've been mixing. So I mixed a lot of soil by hand. I'll try to show you where the soil is. Zoom in. See there's that pile there? I mixed about three or four of those piles already. And to top it off, I sift it. I mix it up. I make my mix. Then I sift out to get any wood chips out of there. I don't want any big bulky items in there. So I have to do each one of those, and that takes time. I don't have a big sifter set up. I'm not really set up to do that, though I should be. I'm not. That takes time, and it's just, by the end of the day, I'm just shot, guys. I can't even, it's hard for me to even put a video together. Just got to hang tight, okay? So let me show you what I got growing on. So here's the last year's peppers, and I cleaned them up a little bit. They dropped a lot of leaves. They're still dropping flowers and whatnot like that but they're, they're doing pretty good you can see some of the old ones that some of them died the older plants because i didn't water these plants at all these were totally dry so i basically brought these back from the dead what you see here like here you can see this one was totally dead and i managed to get the the lower part started again the root system still lived and it's it's slow coming in plus you know it's getting attacked by slugs and everything so because of that reason you know it slowed it down again so but just wanted to show you you know it's not totally over even though it died all the way down to here it's still going to throw up some more branches and we're this will grow eventually it's just going to be slow going at first see like right here you got a slug this is what's been eating my plants in here that's a fat one too he's probably munched so what I do is I grab the slug like this. Oh, look at these, all the stuff he's putting on me. And I just throw him to the fish. Let him swim around in the pond. There's plenty of eating there. So, sorry about that. My hands are all disgusting now. Those things are absolutely gross. Oh. Anyway, I probably got about 80 plus percent of my peppers planted. There's still a few more I didn't get planted. Some of them stunted back because of the intense heat wave we had about two weeks ago. We got about 14 weeks of 95 plus degrees. We hit 100 for a couple days. And it just literally put a damper on everything. 
everything was, the leaves were dropping. Some of these had flowers, they were dropping. So, it was pretty bad. But, yeah, so these peppers are two-year-old peppers now because these were started in January. I started these plants in January of last year. So, we're over two years now. We're like, we're like two and a half years almost on these plants. January of 2018 will be three years for these plants since I started them from seed. So, yeah, these plants got some age on them, but they're still hanging in there. And I still got one three-year, well, this was a two-year, this is three-year now. This is a full three-year, probably going on four-year. Habanero, I still got it left. That's the one of the last of the old plants. Let the other ones die out. I'll probably bring that one in for the winter, being it's a nice little topic piece to do videos on. You know, two-year, three-year, four-year-old plants. That would be a nice one to keep going. I, I can't keep ten going. It's just too many in my current living situation. What else we got here? So, yeah, we got, uh, these are all what they're doing. And just got to kill a little aphids on there. Every time I come in here, if I see any bugs on it, I immediately clean them out. I clean the bugs right off immediately. Because if you don't, the next day it'll be ten times as what you've seen there the day before. You see one aphid, you come back there the next day, the whole top of it will be covered with aphids. Got some very special peppers growing this year. And... As they get bigger, I will talk a little bit more about them. But everything with the X on top is a new pepper. If it doesn't have anything on top, that's just a regrowing it from last year. I, I've already grown those before. Everything with the X is new. And then everything with the stripe is special from Mojo Peppers. Don't know if you're familiar with Mojo Peppers, but he's a pepper grower and he likes to grow a lot of very strange varieties which is stuff that I like and here's one of them you can see on the top of this tag I got a stripe there and this one right here is this pepper okay and I'll put images once I start doing reviews on these plants I'll include an image of what the fruit is supposed to look like and you know the, I'll describe the plant as it gets bigger but they're a little too young for me to really get into this right now I'm just kind of giving you an, an update on things. But yeah, this is the, this, these peppers from Mojo Peppers is absolutely awesome peppers. They're going to be really, really cool peppers to review. Hopefully, they phenotype out correctly. A lot of them are, were F1s as they were sold to me. So in other words, his plant, he crossed them. He finally got a pepper out of it. He, I'm assuming he phenotyped them and sent me seeds from the ones that had the correct phenotype on it because you want to separate your phenotypes as the peppers develop you want to make sure you're saving the ones that look like what you're selling and so he sold me those and hopefully they come out just like his peppers so i'll be carrying the torch on my end from from this side of the world regrowing these peppers and trying to phenotype these out the way he's got them growing so it's like I say, they're F. I, I bought them knowing they were F1s, so they may or may not come out quite the same. Or you might get one or two peppers that look like that, and all the rest might look like a habanero or something. So it's going to take several years of hard work trying to phenotype the peppers and separate them and keep cultivating them year after year until that phenotype becomes stabilized. So that's going to take a number of years. But anyway, it starts here. And yes, I got all kinds of good peppers grown. Okay, up here is my tomatoes. And a lot of these tomatoes are all new varieties. Now, I didn't X off the varieties that are new from last year or any of that stuff. But I'm pretty sure I can recognize which ones are new and which ones are last year. This is the weird one that makes those grape-like clusters and... But you can see they're doing pretty good. They're coming up nice. Some of them got burned off a little. What I did was accidentally, or not accidentally, but stupidly, I took the Epsom salt and I sprinkled it around the base of the tomato plant. And it was right up against the stem. Don't ever do that. I did that and it didn't kill the plant, but it messed up the growth of the plant a little bit. It just did something weird, like the very bottom just turned into a little... Um, twig it was still alive 
but it turned into a little twig. These plants are planted down there about four or five inches in the soil, and that whole thing just was like a twig. So I, I just, I'm not sure. I think it had something to do with me adding the Epsom salt directly up against the base of the tomato plant, and I probably shouldn't have done that, and a couple of my pepper plants burned off from doing that, so I will never do that again. But I usually add Epsom salt to the soil as I mix it, and I also put it in a watering can, and I water my tomato plants with, with the Epsom salt water, diluted, of course, you know. And they, they get a little bit of that, you know, every other day, every two days, every three days. I'm giving them, you know, a steady flow of this inoculated water with Epsom salt. And C90, I also had a little bit of C90. And the plants are doing great. They're a little bit light in color. I don't know if the camera could pick that up, but I'll, they'll darken up once the Epsom salt kicks in. They'll get a little bit darker. But this is still healthy. They, they still look good. They're, they're, you don't want dark, too dark of a leaf on your tomatoes, but then again, you don't want them too light. These could be a little darker. A little bit darker, but they're still healthy. Tops of the plants are look, very good. I don't see any signs of early blight. And I haven't picked any leaves yet because I'm trying to let the plants develop a little bit. But if I do see any kind of blight, I will remove it, like possibly right here. I will remove that maybe tomorrow. I'll go through these. and So, yeah, we got we don't have too many in here, tomato plants, in this area, my greenhouse. Because some a lot of the other ones are going to go into self-watering five-gallon containers. And i got to do a video on that, showing you how I set those up. But most of the tomatoes are going to go in there. I just had this one space left over. I wanted to grow some tomatoes in my greenhouse and not just all peppers. So I got some some tomatoes, some something different other than peppers. So over here, we still have all my other, the rest of my tomatoes that need to get planted out. And I just, like I said, I'm running out of pots and room to be able to plant all this out properly so I can get good growing tomatoes and each one of these plants require a certain amount of your time which is beginning to add up very quickly when you're growing 150 varieties of tomatoes that can add up very quickly so I can't give them all the amount of time they need for me to get each one good and going and then a little neglect kicks in and then you end up with problems so hopefully that's not going to happen I just I need to get the rest of these tomatoes planted, and I just haven't had the time. But this top row over here is going to be all peppers again. It's just right now I got my tomatoes on top of here. So all my tomatoes are on top. Down below, for now, I got nowhere else to keep them. Because it's been so hot out there, I had been leaving my fig trees and stuff outside. But it's been so hot, so one day in the sun will dry that pot out completely, done, dry, plant will be wilting so I had to bring them in the greenhouse I water regularly in the greenhouse I don't really go out here to water if it's not gonna if it can't live on its own out there I generally don't take care of it I know it sounds cruel and mean but I can't I can't do it all there's way too many things I got going within this greenhouse outside of here you got to fend for yourself if you want to live out there so I give them a good start and then they have to do it on their own so, yeah, you can see my fig trees are doing good. They need to be repotted, I know. But, again, just like everything else, I am running out of time. I'm working on it. I got rid of the apple tree that was up front. There's a big pot that's coming in from that. I can probably plant, uh, let's see, what do I got here? I got one, two. I could probably plant three of these. I got four of these, actually. So I could probably plant maybe one or two of these in that big pot, and I'll keep it in here for the winter, and then, I don't know, I'll find a home for the other two, and maybe I'll put them in, a, in a, another pot, and I'll bring that in for the winter with me. Because once they drop the leaves, they really don't need the sunlight anymore. They just need to be out of the cold. Here's some spearmint. Oh, I love spearmint. Spearmint is so awesome. I got to plant this somewhere where it's going to come up every year. Oh, so what else we got going? Here's my potatoes. Again, those are started from seed. And they seem to be doing pretty good. A couple of them burned off, it looks like, a little bit. But in general, they're doing all right. Got more peppers in the back. This whole thing is going to be filled with peppers again. That's all going to be peppers. You know, my row of peppers here. We got Chigo. And then in here, 
we are going to do, let's see, you know, I still got stuff I got to plant. I still have my onions. I replanted my onions because the onions came up and died. I don't know what's going on with that. I got to plant my cotton. I only got two cotton plants I'm going to grow this year. I got to find a good home for those. They're very finicky the way they need to be planted. Where else they don't grow, they stunt very easily. In here, I'm going to plant my peppers here. Right now, I just got some pots sitting on top. Plus, you know, my pe peppers are planted. But I also got some pots still sitting in here, like the oregano. I'm going to find a home for that in here, though it's not going to live through the winter. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll grow it in the end of the bed. Down there is a dwarf tamarillo. I'll talk about that. I'm going to do a video on, on these things once they get a little bigger and they show me some good, healthy growth. Once they get a little bigger, then I'll, I'm going to show you the, tam the dwarf tamarillo. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. It's a little bit different than the other tamarillo. I'm probably going to bring that in for the winter if it doesn't produce fruit this year, which I don't think it will. And then in the middle here, we got... I originally said in my other videos I was not going to plant tomatoes in here. But I, I'm running out of room. I need somewhere to plant tomatoes. So I just stuck six on this side and six over here. I know they're very, they're tight. They're they're going to be growing very tightly packed. But I'm going to have to prune them down to keep things down a little bit in here. Or if they want to go tall, I don't care. It's just I don't want them leaning all over the place. And But either way, I need a place to plant tomatoes. I got way too many tomato plants growing. I even got my, I took out the uh, absinthe bush that was growing there that's gone and now I got you know three varieties of tomatoes in there maybe some cape berries and then here of course I have my my um, cucumbers growing so this is going to be my cucumber area the very center part of this whole thing and they're going to grow up and then along the top you just probably see a string up there you see that string they're going to be tied to that string and they're going to grow across the, the top of the greenhouse. And that'll help cut the light down that's in here because, man, I'm telling you, it's almost hit 130 degrees about a week or so ago. And I've never seen it that hot in here. That is the hottest I've ever seen it in here. Ooh, it's absolutely scorching. And then in here, I have my peppers are growing. And they're doing all right. They're not really bumping yet. They're not... Really not that heat that came in really put a damper on them. Plus, I've been overwatering them. I actually killed a couple pepper plants, but over there I overwatered and they just I guess the roots rotted and died. So I got to remove some of that soil now because of that. I want to make sure that there's no bugs or disease in there. But yeah, two of them died, and I think it's because I was just watering them. I had no at the top of the soil would dry, but the bottom was soaked and soggy. So. With these self-watering wicking beds, you really don't want to top water. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I did, and so it's part of the learning lesson. Seems like the rest of them are doing okay, and I'll go over the varieties once we get close to that point and they start putting out fruits and flowers, but we're nowhere near that. You, you ain't going to see that until probably August, mid to late August. That's why I'm not doing any review videos on any of the stuff I got because we're just nowhere near. Even though I started in March, we're still nowhere near ready for reviews. So, it's going to be a long time before you actually see anything with these peppers. Uh, so, another thing I've been doing is I've been using leaves as mulch. And it seems to be doing pretty good. It's better than wood chips. I noticed when I put the wood chips down, immediately everything starts turning yellow. Right away. So, I'm not liking wood chips too much anymore. I'm not saying I don't like wood chips. What I'm saying is, is I don't like putting uh, fresh wood chips down in the garden or in your beds or anything like that because it just seems like the plants get affected by, by them uh, quite a bit. You know, you can see like it's kind of yellow. I'm giving them fertilizer and stuff. I'm giving them, not overdoing them. Give them enough to where they should be bumping and green. And it's starting to pick up since they put this down. So maybe this has some kind of an effect on it. I don't know. But I'm not doing wood chips anymore. That's that we're done with that. Wood chips got a compost for about three to four years. I'm gonna do an update video to the back to eating episode I was doing, and I'm gonna go over that a little bit. These are all gonna be peppers in here. Everything down here is gonna be all peppers. You can see they're all just starting to come up now. Just coming up really, really slow this year. I don't know why. Normally by now, these plants should have been nice and thick. 
you know. So by by mid July, I should have you know twelve inch tall plants, really healthy. Really, I'm not seeing that. It's coming up really slow this year. So that's basically it. I'm not gonna do a garden update. I'll save that because the garden is is still being planted out. So once it gets planted out, and I see a little bit of growth, I'll do an update on the gar the outdoor garden. Yeah, we still got a ways to go. You know, we're just beginning. Out here, it really the the growing season doesn't really get started until mid July, something like that. Then you'll see like my my um, cucumber vines will be getting nice and big and everything. But but up until that point, oh, watch with your claws, Chico. Stop. He knows the camera's on. He is a camera hog. This one. And that's it. A couple plants here. We got the Kellogg's tomato right there. We're growing that in the pot. I buried it a little bit so the roots can go out and do its thing but yeah that's it for a uh, greenhouse update so I'll post this uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow you might not see it for a couple days I gotta spend two or three hours doing the video to get it ready so once I get that all done I'll post it and it'll be out there for your viewership all right so don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one take care